Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 32, Football Talk with Coach Chip. Today we're going to be talking a little about Buck versus Pin and Pull. No, it's not one is better than the other. That's definitely not what I'm trying to say. It just kind of give you a little perspective of why I'm a Buck dude. And I have done Pin and Pull. And there's several reasons why they both have their positives we'll talk about that i think they both have their drawbacks and what you got to do as a coach you got to make you know make a pro con list you know reasons to do one reasons to do the other you know if it comes out pretty even then you look at what pro or con is a deal breaker or a deal sealer for you and we're going to talk about that today for the next few minutes as we look at buck versus pin and pull on episode 32 of football talk with coach chip all right here you see the good old-fashioned basic you wing uh you delaware wing tiers out there will know this as the 100 formation and this is uh this is the buck right okay uh, let me a blast from the past 121 is what they call it it's what we called it and you see you got down block from the wing, down from the tight, down from the play side tackle. You got a pull kick from the play side guard. Uh, I always just worded this as, you know, get a gap defender to block back. If you got a shade, you're going to reach the nose if you got a zero. And then a pull and a wrap seal by the backside guard. Now, what's different from under center back in the day, we do that cut across that cutoff block. We call that the touchdown block. You get right here, that safety come flying down right here to make the play in the alley. You kick his butt right there, just get in his way, and you make that touchdown cut right there. And that's the good old-fashioned buck sweep that we know and love from our childhoods and from our younger years as of coaching the, uh, the wing tee and the buck. And so many things we do today have come out of that. All right, now here... The way a lot of people do it today and some people this is gun and you see the blocking is relatively the same you've just taken the tight end and split him out and you still got a down block down block now you lose a down block now i've i've sat in uh clinics uh listened to people talk about bucks uh about wing t from gun and and heard a few i was at a wing t clinic and it was close to 20 years ago and they had a uh, Lou Johnson or Lou Johnston from uh, from up uh, Northern Virginia was speaking, and then there was another guy speaking, and they were gun guys. And this is when the gun buck was really taking off, and it's come a long way since then. And I won't say his name, but I mentioned on a previous uh, episode. But this good old fashioned wing tee guy, highly published, a lot of people live and die by his books. It's not quite Delaware, but it's close enough. And he's done a bunch of books. He's coached some college ball, um, not on the offensive side. And he said, hey, that ain't that ain't wing T. You know, and he was sitting like I was right in front of him or right behind him. I can't remember. And I'm not that guy. And and here's what I was thinking. I said, okay, so is it not wing T because there's no tight end? Because I know for a fact I've gone against a bunch of old wing T guys, God and the wool wing T guys, that when you load up over here. If we go back and look at the original classic wing tee from under center, you'd load up over here to stop that buck. I've seen guys run that short buck and use this guy to come in here and block. And this guy come in the short motion and run the buck this way. Okay, short buck is what we always called it. All right, is that not wing tee? I, I, you see, I'm not that, you know, I, I may be old school, but I'm not that old school because I know there's so many ways to skin a cat. And you, know, you say, well, you lose your deception. Well, you, you do, especially if the snaps are up here around the chest and all this kind of stuff. See right there, that little Troy alumni right there. By the way, I am not a Troy University alumni. I am a Troy State University alumni. All right, shout out to all my classic Troy State people. The, of course, now I know how my stepmother feel, felt when they changed the name to Troy State University, she graduated from Troy State College back in the 50s. So anyway, back to this. So I'm not so old school 
that I can't do new things, and that's obvious if you've been following my, my page and following my channel here. But And you can lose some deception here. I know guys that will give it right here and then fake the trap or fake it right here and run the trap with the quarterback. So you still get the trap aspect off the buck. I understand all that. But you can see the blocking's the same. You're just losing one down block. But it's a one-for-one -one exchange. You're taking somebody with you. You may be taking somebody and a half with you if they cheat the force player out here in space a little bit, making that an easier kick for the guard. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. And uh, with the RPO game, what it is now, if, uh, if they want to get heavy and play a nine on that wing back right there, on that tight slot, whatever you want to call it, then that leaves this corner out here by itself. you got a good athlete. You can do the hitches and your fast screens and things like that. So there is a, a plus to both of them, and I see that. But this is not old school buck versus uh, new school buck uh, episode. This is buck versus pin, uh, pin and pull. All right, now, when I call buck back in the day, that means I wanted to run the D-gap. Look, A, B, C, D. Right here, these lines right here, demonstrating the alley we're trying to create with the kick and with the down. Creating that funnel, I like to call it, right there. And that wrapper, that backside guard, in this case, is wrapping up in that, hugging those down blocks, scraping paint, coming right through here, looking for a scraping backer or a safety running the alley. Okay, so back in the day, you wanted to run the D-gap. Or even today, because uh, I know Coach... Uh, Coach Simpson out in Arkansas, he's in gun, and he runs it in a formation like this, okay, where he's got a tight end and a wing back, and he's still running it the same way. He's running D-gap. And one of the reasons why I like Buck is you can better dictate what gap you want to run in. Okay, it's the reason why I don't run Buck with a sniffer back. We've talked about that before, and I'll bring it up again probably later. So that's Buck running the D-gap when you've got the tight end. A, B, C, D. All right, now, the way a lot of people are running it now, flexing or splitting out that tight end and making him a split end, now you're running the C-gap. Do you want to run C-gap? A, B, C. A, B, C. I'm going to run right here, okay? A, B, C. So you can better dictate to me on the buck what gap you're going to run. And the defense, you know, the defense can always do things to dictate to you no matter what you're running. All right, the other, now this is a positive to me for the buck sweep. This goes in the plus column, okay? And I did it with the tight end here. And if it makes you feel better, we can put him back here as a, as a wing, put him in the backfield. But it's still a down block by him. Okay, down block. If that guy's in a in a seven technique, he's inside. He's inside eye, inside shoulder. We're going to block down on him. Okay, we're going to block down on that three. We're going to block back on that shade. Okay, now, this is why I like the buck. One, one, of the, one of the reasons why I like the buck. Not only can I dictate, better dictate what gap I'm going to run, I can also, I get down blocks. Now, and I won't even argue with anybody that wants to talk about reach blocks versus down blocks. It, it, it's, it, it's no contest. I've never met a former offensive lineman or current offensive lineman that would not say, and that's not to say they don't exist because I haven't polled all of them, but I've polled a significant sample size in 34 years of coaching going and then playing. I hate a reach block with a purple passion as a player. And when I started coaching, and that's one of the things that sold me on the wing tee 20 years ago, is the angles. Angles. Make your offensive line job jobs easier and give them angles. We talked about that on previous episodes of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Okay? That try to find angles for your linemen. It, it, down blocks are easier than reach blocks. And and now and that's personal preference. I, I readily admit it. And we'll talk more about why reach reaches are good 
uh, for the pin and pull and for the outside zone in just a little bit when we get to it. But so you get the down blocks, and that's good. It makes it better. Now let's look at the pin and pull. You know, it's basically right here, you got to reach. What if that is a dude? Or what if that is a dude? Okay? That's a rough, you're not, okay, if you got a 240 pound, six foot one, 240 pound right, thick ankle right tackle, who's a pretty good high school football player that you can win with, okay, and you're going against a school that's got a future SEC player, or not even a future SEC player, a future, you know, uh, a group of five player, a kid that's six foot three, 250 pounds, and can run like the wind, or even a former linebacker, they put his hand, I don't know about y'all, but in years past, we've taken some of our linebackers that weren't as good in space right here, and moved them right here, put their hand on the ground, and now you've got a physical mismatch. That's a better athlete right there. Good luck reaching him, okay, with the average high school right tackle. And here's what I'm, and, and now, you may say, well, you know, that, that's not true. What, you're, what I'm about to say is true. I've proven it year after year after year when I run my jet sweep drill. I tell those tackles, I said, you can't reach somebody that doesn't want to be reached. So sometimes you just got to stay with them and run with them, and that jetter's got to cut up inside. You can't reach. And, then I, and I said, you can't even reach me. Now, dude, I'm going to be 58 by the time we get back on that football field in August. And they still can't reach me. I'll get out there in the nine. As soon as that ball snapped, I haul butt the sideline. I don't care who that right tackle is. He ain't catching my old butt running the sideline. You said, well, coach, you ain't making a football play. I said, no, but I proved my point. You can't reach somebody. If you can't reach me when I don't want to be reached, what chance do you have of reaching a 17-year-old boar dog, okay, who can play football still, and doesn't want to be reached because his D-line coach has told him, whatever you do, don't get reached. All right, so you said, what does that matter? He'll just cut up inside. The defense is now dictating what hole you're running. Now your C-gap play has become a B-gap play. Okay? And if that tackle is any good, and every three technique is told from jump street, don't get reached. So now your B-gap play becomes an A-gap play. Or we're trying to outrun that five technique to the corner. And let's not forget, you got a linebacker screaming right here. And we're expecting this puller to come right here. This pulling center or the backside guard coming here to get around there. That can be done. You see it get done all the time. But guys, I'm telling you, don't, don't believe the hype when you're watching Alabama or Georgia, okay, or Oregon, who are, they pin and pull, like Chan Oregon's the best example. When you're what Oregon recruited every one of those kids. And they recruited, their offensive line coach watched them on film and said, yeah, that kid right there, he can do our pin and pull concept. Oh, that tackle right there, look at him reach that kid. They're recruiting them. Now, unless you're a cheater, okay, you're playing whatever walks in the door every year. Okay? That's right. And if you're not playing who walks in the door, even if it's just somebody in the community doing your dirty work for you, you're still a cheater. Okay? Unless you're cheating in high school football, you can't dictate. You can't control who plays for you, who comes out for you. You got to play who comes through that door. And that's part of the glory of coaching high school football. That's why when I go to a uh, to a clinic, I'd heap rather go hear a mid-sized high school coach talk or a successful small school coach talk, okay, and one that doesn't have all that, those rumors circulating around them because I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're coaching at the biggest school in the state of Alabama, Georgia, Florida, or whatever. You're not getting four and five stars every year in your, in your district. You just ain't, okay? So it, talent is cyclic, okay, if you're playing the kids that live in your district. Because, you know, these small communities, you may have to wait a few years for that good group's children to come back through. If you stay there long enough, they'll cycle back through. Because I'm going to tell you something. Genes are undefeated, Hoff. 
nature's undefeated. All right, so that's rough. A down block is much easier. If you don't believe it, ask your lineman what's easier to do. Ask your, your wing back or whoever it is, your tight end. Would you rather reach a nine or a down block on a five? Would you rather reach a five or down block on a three? Would you rather reach a, a two eye with your center or block back on a two? Okay? That's and that's a big plus in the pro column t for me. For me. Again, this is all my opinion. I don't I'm not trying to start an argument. I'm trying to tell you why I hang my hat on buck uh over pin and pull. All right, now this is the complete pin and pull. And I know, I know, no, no, somebody's gonna watch this and say, Well, that's not the way we do it. Some people do it this way. I know, because we did it this way to the tune of 14 and up. And it worked. Okay? But there's one thing that now it sold me on my buck was such things as this. This guy right here, this linebacker, refusing to get reached and us having to turn that joker right in here. Now, I will tell you this. If you can get that reach right there, whether it's a, a nine technique end or whether it's a stand up outside backer, this is a plus for the pin and pull. <clears throat> excuse me you are making you can do a better job with the pin and pull of making the corner force and we've talked about that before on some of our buck episodes you make corner force you're cooking with peanut oil now hoss let me tell you something if you can make that corner force because they spend most of their time doing what defending passes okay now i just put a defense out there i put a three four up there just to put one up there just so you get an idea. But you got to reach, reach, reach. Uncovered, pin and pull. Now, some people play angles with it. If you got a good center, you know, and that nose is pretty John Brown good and don't like getting reached, you can block down with that guard and pull your center. And I learned that. That's a plus I got from the pin and pull guys. Okay, about pulling other people, about making calls. Because one of the tricks D coordinators try to do is play an under front to a team that likes to buck, which makes it tough for that center to reach that A-gap defender, whether they do a, a one or a two eye. Okay? So, but one of the pluses that I learned from the pin and pull guys is they ain't always got to be the guards. Okay? It can be the tackle. It can be the center. Okay? Any of these one, two, three, four guys can be pullers. Remember, the lead one's always the kicker. All right? So, one of the advantages of the pin and pull, to me, is if you can get that reach, and that's that big if, Okay, then you can make that corner your force. Sorry about that. All right, now, and here's another example of the pin and pull right here, where you can see we're going to reach. This is like a 4-3 a four, look, and I kind of made it a 4-2 because it's trips. And I do like, and that's another plus for the pin and pull. You can run pin and pull weak, I think, easier than you can run butt weak. Easier. If, and we go back go back to the if again, if you can reach the nine or the five, whoever the, the perimeter player is on the line, the edge player on the line, if you can reach him. So if you got a tackle that just is a reacher from heaven, okay, and he can reach that five or that nine, or you got a tight end that can reach that nine, consistently, pin and pull is the way to go. And I notice on this one, see, I pulled the tackle for no other reason except to show you. Now, my personal preference year in, week in and week out, I'd rather block down on that three and pull that guard. That's just me. Again, because I'm a, I am I can't get it out of my system. I meet up with angles. I'm looking for angles. Okay? And that's why, again, why I like the gap principles. And even though we've gone more spread, we, we love gap principles because you get angles with, with gap schemes. Okay, but just another example. This is the tackle. Now you got tackle and backside guard pulling. And again, if you can get the reach on the nine, look who you've made force. Another plus for pin and pull. Okay. So there's all kind of ways we can do this. Now I wanted to go back, and I'll go back. Let's go back to that first slide. All right, now back to this slide here. Remember, now, a lot of your spread teams now that are running pin and pull or buck are trying to run the C to D gap, okay? Now, 
we were talking earlier about putting him in the sniffer. Okay. Now I'm not crazy about that. And I've mentioned it before, but I know everybody doesn't watch every episode. I don't know why not. I don't know what's wrong with you. You ain't got good raisin, I reckon. But if, uh, All right, this is why I don't like doing it with the sniffer. The DN right here, okay? If he squeezes, then the, the sniffer pins him. Okay, now you got a buck. He's going to kind of, you know, he's going to block him inside out. All right, now you got a buck because you're running out here, okay? But if that joker runs up the field, that sniffer's kicking him, and that guard's got to recognize in a hurry and it now it becomes practically a B gap play. So you got your tackle blocking down, your guard wrapping around him. Okay? And it's just all it is now is just a little fold by the guard. And then this other guard is coming up in here, and he, he's got more time to recognize it because he's coming from distance. And that's why I don't like running the buck with the sniffer. And you don't know from week to week, you don't know from play to play. Remember, not only are you coaching high school kids. You're coaching against high school kids. And you may you may see him on two plays squeezing like a champ and going in there and wrong shouldering and all that kind of good stuff. And you got your linebacker doing cloudy clear over the top, fitting up outside of the squeeze and all that. And then the very next play, that joker runs his happy butt up the field. Okay, and your sniffer's kicking him. And the guards got to recognize that. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, we're dealing with kids, and we've talked about this, where you got an H-back that's blocking down. That's blocking down the whole game. The whole game, he's blocking down on the same kid. All right? So for, let's say, the whole first half, he's blocking down on number 98. Right there. Well, at halftime, they make some kind of adjustment because we're just gashing their hiney right here on the buck, and they put 98 out here, head up, your age. He said, hang on, I'm getting to my point. And now he goes out there and tries to reach him and frigs up your buck. Okay, they're playing with the same kind of kids you are. So he may get tired of squeezing, and all of a sudden he runs upfield and it changes your whole play. But the way I run it, I got more control over what's going on the way I run it, in my opinion. And I, I hearken back, you follow high school, which is in southeast Alabama, right there on the Chattahoochee River. It's the big bass capital of the world. The Ufala Tigers were really, really good. They're still a good program, but they were kicking butt in the old four class, four class days in Alabama as a 3A. They won three, I think, three state championships under coach, legendary coach George Cochran. And I was at a clinic years ago uh, back in the 80s, I was a young coach. It was like 86 or so. Coach Cochran was still around at Ufala. And somebody brought up the point, an older coach uh, said, Coach Cochran, he said, Why? He said, weren't you a basketball coach? Coach Cochran had played like college basketball, and he'd started out as a basketball coach and just coached football. And he said, I fell in love with coaching football, he said, because it's a coach's game in the sense the coach has more control over what goes on. Because you think about it, in basketball, it's more free-flowing. You know, basketball and soccer both are more free-flowing. And it's in football, the coach, you have a timeout between every play. It's like basketball used to be when they invented it. When you score a basket, they take a broom handle and poke the ball back out of the peach basket. And so you have another, and you have another jump ball. So back in the day, basketball wasn't as free-flowing 100 years ago. But football has that many timeout. Whether you huddle or you don't huddle, you've got a many timeout, even if you're a fast-tempo team, to call plays. And so my point is, is that you, as the coach or as the play caller, have a better idea about the point of attack in buck than you do in pin and pull. And again, all this is my opinion, and I'm not going to argue. Okay, because it's my opinion. You know, in my opinion, it's based on my experience and the kids that I've coached. Okay, 
and I've coached at big schools too. I've coached at six A's and all that. And it's still the same thing. I've never been in a place where I just go in there and look like, Oh yeah, you'll do, you'll do, you'll do. Okay. You're my starting five lineman. Come over here. Look at you. You pretty joker. You're six foot four. You weigh 240 pounds. You run a four, seven 40 and you're a great power forward, but you're going to make it someday as a tight end. You come over here and play my tight end. Never been in a place like that. Even when I was at five A's, six A's and six A's that are now seven A's, they were seven A's then that just seven, A's just didn't exist yet. Okay, with 2,000 kids, never do you just go in there and say, look at these linemen. Look at, boy, that guy right there. All right, now, I told you earlier, another plus for the pin and pull is this. If pin and pull is just the derivative of the outside zone, if I hung my hat on the inside zone, then absolutely, pin and pull and outside zone because they go together so well. I freely admit that. But I don't hang my head on the inside. Now, I do run zone. If you go back and look at my, my zone video, but it's not true zone. Okay? It's more dive blocking rules. If I was a true zone guy, you know, if I was at a school where we could just line up and we could run inside zone, inside zone, inside zone. Oh, let's throw a little deuce action in there. Duo action in there. Okay? And let's do a wide zone. Or let's do the off tackle zone. All right, let's do the, you know, and everything was, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day. He's going to a school. He's he's leaving as being a head coach to take an assistance job at a much bigger school because the pay is that much better and less responsibility. And he's going to be the O-line coach. They're basically going to run three blocking schemes, you know. They're going to run the counter. They're going to run the inside zone. Oh, they're going to run duo and outside zone. Not even run true inside zone, which I don't know. If that's, I don't know enough about duo to make a decision on that. But that's just my opinion. So that's why I'm a buck guy over a pin and pull guy. Doesn't make buck better. Makes me more comfortable buck. Makes me, I'm, I'm a better teacher of down blocks than I am of reach blocks. And I think kids down block better than they reach block. Year in and year out. Because you may not have the 240 pound tackle that can reach. You may have a 240 pound 5 foot 10 tackle who's not a, doesn't have great feet, but he can block down like a son of a gun. Well, that's it for now. Hang in there with the corona hiatus. We're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm seeing where memos are coming out around states about June looking pretty good for us. So hang in there. Give me comments down below. You can reach me at Siegel.chip on Gmail. I'm at Chip Siegel on Twitter. Coach Chip on Facebook and Chip Siegel on Facebook. And until next time, as I love to tell you, be elite.